When making the decision to move off grid, we did so knowing the journey in front of us would be long and arduous. With lots of hard work behind the scenes, our amazing community here on YouTube, and of course our family and friends standing firmly behind us, that journey is about to get a little bit shorter and a little less arduous. I think it's a great location for the geodesic dome, don't you? I think so. The plans have been set in motion, and our lives are about to change in a drastic yet positive way. Look how cool this is. The pink. We got corn. So cool. So cool. Doesn't feel ready yet. Just us. So my dad did finally make it. As Jeff said last week, he was going to be visiting. We got a lot of stuff happening. We have some wood being milled and we're going to start building the platform for the geodesic dome. For those of you who haven't met my father yet, he visited last year, but I'm really excited for people who are new here to haven't met, who haven't met him, to meet him. He's been a huge inspiration in my life. He's, to me, he's always been like the real life Indiana Jones from, you know, getting out, being in the Marine Corps in the 60s to living in the Amazon jungle. And I mean, like a thousand miles in the jungle with the indigenous people to being in Iraq in the army at 58. Like he's done so much in his life. I've always strived to be like him, falling quite short. That's so good. I'm amazed that we are growing all the stuff that we're eating. I love it. Well, not everything that we're eating, but we're on our way. Definitely learned a lot this year. I saw her. Mm. Well, we're going to go start planning out the, uh, the platform. So let's go introduce you to my dad. Maybe he'll tell us one of his cool stories from when he went to Woodstock. The beaver pond's this way, this transparent PVC will be heading that way. Okay. The door will be this way because the path comes up back up the hill. Okay. And then the windows will be head or facing this way. Around right. here. And that goes out over. The the transparent this is the big like big window. Mm -hmm. So that's what'll be facing over the beaver pond in the sunset. To rather do a twenty-six by twenty-six and then we'll do center beams and then rafters off of that. Uh, that'll be the most economical and it still be strong. Hey, Aaron, how you doing? Just checking to see how we're going along with the lumber and when we're going to get some delivered. We're working on it. We, just, we haven't got a whole lot of the we are working on it. Do we have an estimated time frame? Yeah, first of the week is the time we should have. Okay, that'll work. What do you say? First of the week. Okay. All right. That'll work. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. You take care. Have a good weekend. Bye now. <laughs> Standing guard, Nelly. Perfect. Isn't it perfect, Kiki? Isn't it perfect? Oh, it's perfect, Nelly. <laughs> I think they like the spot, too. The view here from fall through winter. It's gonna be beautiful, but what's really good about the spot I like is the sunsets right over there. And the sky is beautiful. Yeah, it's gonna be so picturesque, and I think we're gonna be so much more comfortable, which will allow Jess and I to get so much more work done on the homestead. Ready to work? Ready as can be. I'm ready to get this started. Yeah. For those of you who haven't met my father, this is Richard, the retired first sergeant, Iraq veteran, and 
pretty much an adventurer his whole life. He's here to help me this week. Glad to be here. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> I'll see if I can see if he could keep up with me. All right. Hey, that's a real statement. <laughs> Let me see. That's 27 feet. Come on back. Oh, reel it in. Where's 24? All right, pull it out. There's 24 right there. 75. All right, we need to sit down with pencil piece of paper here and we'll figure this out. We're figuring out the angles of how we're going to set this deck. He's back there doing some trigonometry or geometry, whatever it is. All right. That's how me and Jess set the garden. I'm going to post with our phone compass. You want to go put something out there? Over three inches, four inches. Right or left? You're right. I think we got this position and squared the way we want it. How big across is it now? It's 34, 34 feet. foot across. Okay. Well, and we're going to check. Huh? The, and 17 from the center. 17 from the center. Let's check it. Okay, 17. 17. If we have this all set where we want, it's all measures out. Now we're going to dig the center hole for the center post. Yeah, just keep moving along, see what we can get done today. I am pretty, it's kind of surreal though, this all coming together, really surreal. I was, we were a little bit like, oh, what are we going to do? And just things worked out. Go ahead. Where's my bedroom going to be? Yeah. <laughs> so I get this half, right? <laughs> yeah, this half. <laughs> the whole half. After a few hours, we got everything measured out, marked out, and the beginning of the holes dug. We're going to use the auger to kind of dig out where the, the saddle tubes are going to go so we can pour concrete and create the footings. It's coming together. It's kind of getting surreal now. It's like the beginnings of our house. I... I think we didn't order enough wood to actually complete the platform for as big as we need it. So we kind of took a step back for a second, we're redrawing this out, and we're going to get back at this a little bit in the morning. I really wanted to, since most of the supplies aren't going to end up coming till probably the beginning of next week, I really wanted to take the time to spend some time with my father, because uh, I don't really get to see him that much. So I think I'm going to take him around to show him some of the sites that he get that he actually missed the last time he was here. And then once all the supplies come in, we're going to get back really on this, but we're going to still be in the planning stages. If you could, people could see the smile on my face to be cutting up my own food. <laughs> like I'm so excited about this and it's so colorful. 
and I love to cook with a lot of color. So like, I'm super happy about this. So pretty. Mm. Sure had a pretty harvest today, didn't we? We did. <laughs> She, pro she pulled out the most colorful harvest we've had yet. That's for sure. Most definitely most colorful. Yeah. What are you putting in? Some just Italian seasoning. I'm sure it's a mix of like oregano, basil, oregano, rosemary, thyme, parsley. Absolutely love this stove. I love this stove. The new stove for outdoor, make cooking a little easier. Oh, it's 100%. Well, make cooking even like possible because we couldn't use the stove in the camper anymore. And I mean, we had the little rock stove, but. It served its purpose that day. <laughs> it definitely did. Now we cook dinner. <laughs> I'm sure it's gonna be delicious. Yep. But Thank you for Thank all your Thank you to us. <laughs> there you go. Thank you for all your help. <laughs> My father brought so much stuff with him this time that it's all useful and we're gonna I'm so grateful for it, but we just don't have a place for everything right now, so before dinner he's over here constructing a little table. But let me show you something really cool that he brought me that I'm really happy to have. Y'all know my draw knife. I talk about it all the time. Also, from my great-grandfather's tools, I guess. Garden tools. Garden. That would be his garden tools. I got his scythe. Now I'm going to be able to clear all this property without using any gas. Oh. <laughs> She's like, I need to be involved. Millie, what's wrong with you? All right, buddy. <clears throat> Can't hardly see it down there. We got bamboo growing. That's right, some bamboo. See how it does. He brought so many cool things. We got a banana tree, a bunch of fig trees, bamboo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, here's your next one. The banana tree is exciting. Yeah. yeah, we have one more over there. I love this one. Yeah, look at this one, Jeff. It already started booing. <laughs> got a little boo shoot. Come here, come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. <laughs> She's like not wanting that bamboo planted, is she? She's like, that's a hole for her to sit in. <laughs> Come on, Nellie. Go ahead, get over there. <laughs> Nellie. She's being extra protective, maybe. She's like protecting you. Right. <laughs> Got my back, girl. <laughs> like, don't you worry, you get your bamboo planted and I'll watch you real close. Throw of it? That's it, just two. All right, cool. <laughs> Hopefully in the future we have a giant bamboo line. <laughs> yeah, border along the orchard. That'd be cool. Yeah.
<laughs> My father brought us some Kapi Luwak coffee, which is supposed to be one of the best coffees in the world. Um, it's processed when Palm Civic cats gorge themselves on the coffee cherries and it passes through the digestive tract and it mixes with other berries and fruits creating this like really unique flavor. We're gonna, we opened it, but we're gonna try it right now and see if it kind of holds up to its, the lure of it. <laughs> How do they get the berries out of the cat? They go and, they go and pick them up after they poop them out <laughs> and they clean them off <laughs> and we get this. <laughs> so we're gonna have poop coffee today. The world's best coffee. The world's <laughs> good. <laughs> This coffee actually comes from Indonesia, in case anyone's interested in where this is collected, <laughs> I guess is the Collected word. is a good word. <laughs> I'm sure you guys are wondering how we're all fitting in this shed, because we are all sleeping in here. So I'll take you in and let you see our <laughs> setup. <laughs> Nellie's still in bed. We have one dog bed here on the ground. Jess and I bed, and then my dad's sleeping right over here. <laughs> <laughs> we have no floor space. No floor space. <laughs> but it's cool. We're doing it. We're making it work. Yep. Try this. I'm ready. Deep, dark, rich coffee in there. Mm. It is. Wow. Healthy, too. Yep, straight from the cats. But. <laughs> <laughs> but it is rich and good. I could drink this black all day. You could? Mm hmm. It's kind of mouth dry to me. Is it? I mean, it's good and it's not bitter. I like the flavor of it, but it, you know, I, it gives me like dry mouth on the way back. Planting the fall seeds today. I'm so excited. I already have them out here and I'm so ready. <laughs> I wrote this plan down a long time ago. I remember when you did. Yep. We got lots of good stuff to plant. I'm most I... excited about the white stuff. <laughs> like the snowball turnips and the white pumpkins. What are you doing? We got flowers. A ramapo. Yay! <laughs> Look how red it is and perfect looking. That's beautiful. Mm. It smells good, huh? Yeah, we're gonna save the seeds from this because we don't have any more of these. Yeah. We got more growing, but just in case. That's we... our only plant that survived of the ramapos. Oh, huh, they're all survived. All yeah, but the, those back there are Cherokee purples. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you mean it's the only... It's the only Ramapo. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Look how tall you are compared to the okra. Go over there and stand by the real tall piece so people can see how tall the okra is. <laughs> yeah, they got like stalks like that. <laughs> ah. Alright. We're going to eat this. Yes. Mm. See how these okra flowers are, they're so pretty.
know you all been here before, but my father's never seen it, and I'm excited to show him these waterfalls. Beautiful, right? Are you ready to go? <laughs> I'm gonna stop and look. He's like, let's get to it. What? Yeah, what are you talking about? Careful, Dad. Walk easy away from me. There's no railing, and it's a uh, hundred foot drop. <laughs> What do you think of it here? Oh, I love it. That's beautiful. I'm glad I got to bring you here this time. We tried the last time. We didn't have a chance to bring them anywhere. We just worked, so <laughs> little. But uh, I was kind of hoping that I told everybody in the beginning of the video that maybe we get to hear one of your cool stories from your life because I've told them that you're like Indiana Jones. But why don't you pick the, what you think to be the coolest thing that you've done? Because I know this definitely wasn't the coolest you've ever done. Living so. in the Amazon jungle, flew into Caracas, down to Ciudad Bolivar, which is right on the jungle, the last city there is, and then flew, I don't know, 800, 900 miles into the Brazilian border, and uh, they just landed on a, an old dirt road in the field. That's The dirt road didn't go anywhere. There were no roads to this place. Uh, beautiful rivers. Uh, landed in this village, and uh, <clears throat> and there were indigenous uh, people there, prehistoric. Uh, some were very close, some weren't. What do you mean by prehistoric? I mean, very, very old like culture. They, they, yeah. they haven't had contact with the outside world much. These people have had contact, but you go further into the jungle and they have very, very little contact with the, with the people there in loincloths or whatever. Uh, it's this kind of area that's kind of strange where they have some people in, in jeans and the rest of the some of the people in half naked um so anyway it was uh, they asked me to go fishing so i went fishing with them i said okay i don't have a rod i don't know what okay what go down to the thing they're pouring uh karari into the stream that goes into the river fish fall asleep then you grab the fish what's karari karari is a they used to use it in medicine as an anesthesia um, so they're basically putting the fish to sleep they and just picking the them up. <laughs> That's funny. So I, I partnered up with about a four-year-old little girl and uh, filled her net. And when we went back there, I couldn't, she wouldn't let me help. She had the biggest grin on her face. Her knees were buckling. She had a, a f fishes, you know, in a net this big. Uh, but all I, I don't know, didn't know, know any further than that. But all I know is they, uh, she was really happy. And Elizabeth, uh, a little girl, came and got us when we were way out in the jungle. And so we, we walked quite a distance to the village, and there was uh, Elizabeth laying there. She had measles. Uh, so I gave her fluids and food, and I walked back to this village, this small hamlet, to two, three times a day for 10 days, uh, and she survived. She didn't know who I was, never, you know, she was completely out of it. But Just laying survived. in the jungle. And, well, she's not, she, her family was there. Oh, okay. But she survived. Emily survived. How long did you spend at a time in Venezuela, in the jungle? Some, some years, only a month, some years, two or three months. Did you ever find a lot of gold, diamonds and gold? Yeah, we messed up when we were looking for gold and found diamonds once. You know. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, we found, we found a, a bit of gold. You know, but, we're yeah. not millionaires, but we you know, uh, that's like something you'd see, like I said, like Indiana Jones. It's like things you hear about in the movies, but you don't. And no, uh, actually, I ended up in Colombia myself for... Well, I knew about when everybody would say, well, if there's so much gold, why doesn't everybody go there? <laughs> well, you do the walk and go through the jungles, through the swamps, hike up the hills. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, a picture with him, uh, this anaconda was 
tracking them, and they had they picked it up, and they, you had to chase it away, didn't you? We had to chase it away. Yeah, yeah. But it just kept following you. Yeah, it kind of just stayed with us. <laughs> Twenty foot anaconda. Yeah. So. Uh, all right, you ready to get out of here? Let's go. It's uh, really it's getting dark, but yeah, this is beautiful. Up. I love the woods. Love the woods. But, Don't get me, B. We're just sharing this flower. <laughs> Hanging Might on my the bees. Beach <laughs> That's huge. It is. <laughs> we grew some sunflowers. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna let the rest of these go to seed so we can have some sunflower seeds, but we're gonna make a little flower arrangement. Put this in for today. Mm. I love the smell golden of goldenrod rod. is amazing. I love goldenrod. This makes some really good honey too if you beekeep it all. It does. You know when we dried it last year and drank the tea, it tasted honeyish. Mm -hmm. I mean, it smells like honey. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's super pretty. It's a really pretty. It is. It'll look good in our little vase. <coughs> That's yeah, looking better. a lot better. <laughs> I, was, I didn't like the other one at all. It was falling all over the place. That's much better. Right. Well, that's our episode for the week, everyone. Um, Father will still be here next week as we begin to build the platform. Um, I wanted to give a, a special thank you to all of our subscribers. And <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> everyone who's been helping support make this become a reality. My parents, mom. I wish my mom could be here, but she's not a woodsy person. She wouldn't know where to wear her heels. <laughs> but most, more importantly, she's been dealing with a battle with breast cancer. She's been having a lot of surgeries, and um, she's. I'm really proud of her for pulling through this and, and really. She's cancer. Huh? She's cancer free. She is cancer free now. Yeah, she had a double mastectomy, but all the things that come afterwards with that has been a little bit of a little bit of a challenge for her. But she's doing good. So everybody. Please send your prayers and good vibes towards her way so she can help get through this. And we will see you next week when we start, the platform. start building the platform. Or, or, or you could watch my new YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah. If you think my dad should start a YouTube channel telling the stories of his life, leave a comment below. Let us know. <laughs> Let us know. I'll make him do it. <laughs> Glenn, Lisa, and Andy, thank you so much because you guys have also been an integral part of ensuring the success of Soul Fed Homestead. We love you guys too. We thank you guys super much. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right, everyone. We love you. Keep growing. Keep growing. And we'll see you next time. Take care. I'll see you next week. I'm going to be here another week. Yep. <laughs>